G'day, how's it going? Uh, today we have what I think are some very exciting uh, stories in the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel according to Mark. Um, and they might seem as if they are just a random assortment and a, a strange collection of Jesus's miracles and healings and things like that. But I actually want to show you that they are all connected to each other if you know what you're looking for. Uh, so the reading today is from Mark 6, 45 to Mark 7, 37. And the key to understanding what all of these strange stories have to do with each other, it, it lies in noticing the geography. So how's your Middle Eastern geography? <laughs> well, that's okay. Maybe it's great. We'll work on it together today. Uh, the first story, uh, we, we know that Jesus is in Galilee, which is his home region. It's the region where he's been doing most of his, of his ministry so far. And we know that uh, Jesus went to his hometown in yesterday's reading. And in his hometown, Jesus's, uh, the people at the synagogue kind of shrugged their shoulders at him. They didn't think he was very interesting. They were like, oh, isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't this, and his sister's here with us. And he wasn't able to do much with that. It tells us that he wasn't able to do many miracles there. And a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. So he's in his home region. And today we read that he uh, sends his disciples in a boat to the other side of the lake. Uh, so Jesus's home region is on the western side. Western side? Oh, wow. It's, it's mirrored. So this is strange. Anyway, Jesus's home region is on the western side of the lake of um, Galilee, and Jesus sends his disciples to the eastern side of the lake of Galilee, uh, to the other side of the lake. And now that's really important to notice because the other side of the lake is where the Gentiles lived. That's the Gentile side of the lake. So Jesus sends his disciples um, away from Capernaum and Nazareth and yeah, Jesus' hometown, he sends them to the eastern side, to a place called Gennesaret. Uh, and it's mostly Gentiles, meaning non-Jewish people on this side of the lake. So Jesus is taking his ministry away from, the, Gen from the, the Israelites, from God's people in the Old Testament, who have shrugged their shoulders at him, and he's moving his ministry to the Gentile people. And when he gets there, uh, it says that wherever he went, into villages, towns, and countryside, they placed their sick in front of Jesus in the marketplace, and he healed them. It says that they, they would even reach out to grab the hem of his cloak, and everyone who reached out and did so was healed. So he goes away from the people who shrug their shoulders at him to the Gentile people who, uh, who absolutely love him, and they can't get enough of him. And then we're told... That the Pharisees, this is the start of chapter 7, the Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. Now, important to notice, Jerusalem, for the Israelite people, that is their spiritual home. It's, it's the home of God's people. It's the location of the temple of the Israelite people. It's about three days walk to the south of uh, the Galilee region. And so these people have come from Jerusalem up to this region to suss out who Jesus is. And Jesus basically says uh, that these people are hypocrites, that these are the ones that Isaiah prophesied about, that they pay honor to God with their lips, but their hearts are far from him, uh, that they're more interested in enforcing their own rules than teaching people about the way of God. He writes them off, essentially. He says that the, Jer the Jerusalem people, they have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. They're concerned with all the wrong things. And then we read on in the next story that Jesus has left that place and he went to the vicinity of Tyre. Now, Tyre is kind of near modern day uh, Lebanon. It's quite far north and it's on the, the Mediterranean coast. So Jesus has gone a long way away. And there we're told he meets a woman who is Greek from Syrian Phoenicia. So she's from this area. Uh, from the Tyre area, and she's a Greek woman. And she asked Jesus if he would heal her daughter. And this is where we find this interesting um, dialogue uh, that I think a lot of us are really confused by. Jesus says to this woman, first, let the children eat as all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread 
I have to toss it to the dogs. And then this lady replies and says, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And see, what's happening here is this little dialogue is a little peek into what's happening with the Israelite people and the Gentile people. Jesus is saying, first, he will take his message of the kingdom to the Israelite people and see if they want it. Uh, and then he, and then this lady says, yeah, but if they don't want it, what about the Gentiles? Uh, the, the thing that makes it confusing for us is that it, Jesus refers to the Gentiles as the dogs. And, oh, gee, it's, it's, it sounds pretty insulting, doesn't it? Uh, I think it's not, it's probably, Jesus is, is angling this lady toward um, seeing whether she uh, really does have faith in him. So I think it's not so much a derogatory comment as he is um, just using the kind of language of metaphor to see if this woman's on board with what he's on board with. Uh, because this lady's reply, uh, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs, Jesus says, because of this response, your daughter will be healed, and she is healed. And then the next story that we read, Jesus enters the region of the Decapolis, which means the ten cities in Greek. Deca, ten, polis, cities, Decapolis, ten cities. So again, this is a non-Jewish area. It's the Decapolis, it's the ten cities in Greek. And Jesus goes there and he does a miracle there. So we let me summarize this. In Jesus' hometown, we read yesterday that they shrugged their shoulders at Jesus. Today, Jesus is questioned by the Pharisees and they turn their nose up at him. So in some ways, God's people, Israel, have rejected Jesus. But then Jesus goes to these Gentile cities and they're losing their minds about Jesus. Hordes are coming to him and following him wherever he goes and he's healing people in multitudes. Now, the key to understanding what this is saying lies in the Syrian Phoenician woman. Uh, Her story, her expression of faith shows us what we should do as well. Jesus says to her, I'll read it again. He says to her, First, let the children eat all they want, for it is not right to take the children's bread and to toss it to the dogs. And then this woman's response is, Lord, Lord, so she calls him Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. So she comes humbly to Jesus and she expresses faith in his ability to do for her what she wants him to do. Jesus She has faith in Jesus and she approaches him humbly. And I think that's the lesson for this. Uh, God is welcoming the Gentiles into his promise, into his covenant. And their part of the deal is that they should have faith in him. Let me pray that we would be people like that. Father, thank you for this wonderful section of scripture and thank you that you um, your kingdom is open to those who are not ethnically israelites people like me um, people like australians Uh, lord i just ask that we would be humble and that we would have faith in your son jesus like this syrian phoenician woman lord help us to be that those people today amen ciao